Yo, 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 what's up, family? It's your dog, the Ultra Melanite, coming to you live once again from Charleston, South Carolina, a.k.a. the Holy City, home of the Geechee Gala culture. And today we are going to be debunking the, the so-called Native American DNA and exposing the lie, which is ancestral and genealogical DNA. Remember, you cannot find truth in a lie, and most of us search for our identity in a system that is built around lies. One of the major questions that I get from most of my community is that, well, if we are from America and not Africa, why does our DNA match so closely to those in West Africa? And the answer to, to that question is simple, and I'll elaborate on it once we get further in the video, but the simple answer to that question is because we are both racially black, all right? <clears throat> you will always have a genetic or a DNA relationship when you deal within the, the same race. So a mongoloid person in the steppe region is going to show a genealogical connection to a mongoloid person in Alaska. And the same with a Caucasian in Scandinavia and a Caucasian in Italy. They will show a genetic uh, relationship to each other simply because they are both Caucasian. All right. So that's the simple answer to that question. Remember, the Negritos and Negrillos populated the world. All right. They were the oldest people living living here as far as I know anyway. All right, I may be wrong, but as far as from my research tells me that the Negrito and the Negrillo populated the world. And Luzia, which is one of the oldest specimens found here, had the traits of an oceanic Negro. So what does that mean? That means she came from a Negrito population. Most, pop, uh, most, most likely, she resembled those people in Madagascar, those people in uh, Tasmania, uh, Melanesia, the island of Fiji, Australia. All right. So I get another question. They say, well, why do you seem to show uh, uh, more of a racial connection to the people of Oceania versus the people of Africa. And that's simply untrue. We are both Negroes. We are both uh, racially in the same category. I'm only stating the facts that the oldest specimen found here was that of a Negrito, was that of an Oceanic Negro, all right? Now, understand, we have our own identity here separate from Oceania, separate from Africa, separate from India, all right? We are our own people. We are the American Negro, simple and plain. We are found all over the world, our cousins all over the planet, all right? We were the first people to populate the planet. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it so I can explain to you and elaborate what this DNA scam is. Boom. Let's rock it. All right. So what is Native American DNA? Before answering that question, we need to know the grammar behind the word DNA. DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid, and it is a fundamental part of organic life, and it acts by transferring information used to grow and function, all right? It is a nucleic acid formed into strands held together by sugars and phosphates to form that famous double helix structure that we all know, all right? DNA, for all extensive purposes, is the fingerprint of our physical being. It can be used to link you to a crime if you can commit a crime. It can be used to determine paternity, and it also can be used to uh, find things such as diseases within your genome. So we know that DNA exists, all right? The question for us is, can these tests also be used to establish a biological link between us and other people across the globe? And that question, just like many other questions, is a matter of perspective or relativity, like we like to say in science, all right? If you are using DNA to link you to people around the globe with similar markers as you, then cool, it's pretty accurate, um, uh, accurate among test subjects. However, if it is being used to establish a point of origin for a genetic bloodline, then it's 100% false. I'll say it again. If DNA is being used to establish a point of origin for a genetic bloodline, then it is 100% false. And let me elaborate, all right? DNA cannot establish a positive genetic relationship between people, only a possible connection. DNA can only be 99% accurate when dealing with paternity or, uh, or maternity. Proof, proof for you is within the, the sibling DNA, all right? 
Sibling DNA tests cannot be 100% accurate unless there's a parent to also be uh, tested to establish the link. As each child's DNA is unique to that child and the siblings can only be successfully tied to each other via the X and Y parental chromosomes. So if DNA cannot blindly tie you to your closest sibling, what makes you think that it can tie you to your first cousin or your distant relatives or your long lost uh, relative or ancestors in Africa or Asia or wherever, all right? Science tells us that that logic is actual and it can only be used to identify people with similar markers, not to say that you are genetically related to each other, all right? So how does ancestry DNA work? Ancestral takes your genetic markers from all 23 of your chromosomes, both X and Y, which, which off the rip is a big no-no, and compares it to the populations around the world with similar markers to you. All right. Since only identical twins have identical DNA, there will never be a 100% match between you and anybody else. All right. Everybody is unique. All right. So the matches are based off of a percentage of the average population with a particular marker, which in essence only shows a racial connection, like I said earlier. Example, subject A in America is Negro. Subject B in Africa is Negro. DNA results should show some level of similarity between these people. People, same as with every other race. All right. So why is there a difference in DNA from one country to the next? Let's say Ethiopia to the Congo. And the answer to that question is pretty simple. Also, it's because of something called single nucleotide polymorphisms, which is a change to the nucleotide that appears on a specific place in the genome. All right. Understand that this is not evolution. All right. This is a gradual change to an X chromosome over a period of time. It is simply caused by people's design to be cre created unique, which, of course, over time causes major changes between bloodlines even if they are in the same family so you and your brother have the same parents but you obviously have different genes unless you're identical twins with your sibling understand another question that i get is so why are black americans dna so similar to black africans dna and like i said earlier the simple answer to that question is because all black Americans, black Africans, uh, Oceanics, parts of Asia, Melanesia, we are all Negroes, meaning that there is a genetic connection between us. We have the same genotype. All right. There is a genetic connection between people of the same race. That's why we can be linked to people in Africa and Oceania and uh, parts of Asia, Melanesia, all right? Second reason is because genealogical DNA test is based on ethnic groups that are, are based off of a control group in an area, which should be the oldest group of people that they found living in the area. The, con group, the, uh, the control group in America that they use is a mongoloid control group, which is shouldn't be done. We know that Luzia is one of the oldest people uh, one of the oldest fossils ever found here, and we know that she was uh, the product of a Negrito. She was an oceanic, uh, a paired Negro, all right? So if we based our DNA in America off of Luzia's DNA structure, the Mongol, Ameri Mongol Native Americans would understand that they are not from here through ancient migrations. Also, there are many Negroes that have definite in indigenous blood, like the Yamasee, Raichai, and Charleston. So why aren't we used as a con control group knowing that we definitely have this blood inside us? So if we know that this blood is inside us, why can't they isolate that marker and use that as Native American DNA? But they won't because they're using a Mongo group for your uh, your control group. All right. Last reason we matched them so closely is because they sent thousands of black Americans to West Africa, causing our DNA to mix with theirs and giving us another genetic link to Africa. Let's face it. Our enemies are geniuses at war. They study war. They live their life based on war. They purposely mixed our bloodlines to make sure that we would not know who we were in the future. Therefore, quelling any uh, rebellion that may occur in the future because of it. In closing, let me just reiterate the fact that there is no such thing as Native American DNA. Ancestral and genealogical DNA tests cannot be used to successfully tie you to your long-lost relatives around the globe. It simply cannot be done. 
The reason why black Americans and black Africans share a genetic relationship is simply because we are both Negro. It's common sense. The term sub-Saharan DNA should be changed to original or Negro DNA. That way it won't be so confusing to people. By them calling it sub-Saharan DNA and you not going and do the research, you think that that DNA strand was isolated to Africa when really it represented every Negro around the planet, all right? So the Negroes in Madagascar, the Negroes in Tasmania, all of these people had sub-Saharan DNA. Do you dig me? Do you understand that, all right? So we're going to stop using the term sub-Saharan DNA. We're going to change that term now to original or Negro DNA to make it simple for our children. And here's a map of sub-Saharan or original DNA, all right? Understand that this is the original human DNA strand. Anyone wanting to debate me fully and technically about this issue, hit me up. You know, we're not going to get into the subclades and the clades on this and start confusing people. We're not going to talk about the K2B, but really, I, I, I do understand all of that. So if you want to have a live debate and we can put it on YouTube, I ready for your family. Peace out. Hope y'all enjoy the video.